It seems there's a war brewing between the scientists and the historians, and only the select few will accept both. We're all saying the same thing, that real natural food equals optimal health. It's just how the conclusion is arrived at that's different. For some reason, many people in the paleo community just don't want science interfering with their caveman belief structure. To them, it's as simple as, I live my life like the people lived millions of years ago, uh, leading up to 10,000 years ago. Any good scientific information, even the kind that supports their lifestyle, is shunned. I agree that history should be taken highly into account when discussing the nutrition situation, but at the price of disregarding science? Really? They've been calling for the nail in the coffin of scientists and scientific researchers for years now, but within the past few weeks it has come back strong, as it always does. Let me stop for a minute and point something out. If you don't know how to tell good science from bad science, then you shouldn't be calling for a regime change in any scientific matter. Do yourself a favor, and if you haven't already, go watch Tom Naughton's Science for Smart People lecture. Uh, it's on YouTube, just search for Science for Smart People. It's roughly 45 minutes, and it's humorous as well, so you shouldn't have any difficult time watching it. The basic premise is that far too many observational studies are taken as gospel when no variables are controlled. They typically ask very broad questions, and they take the study subjects on their word, rather than checking data. But making sure that a study is a controlled clinical study isn't the only thing you have to look out for. You also have to make sure that the parameters are well defined and match what the experiment says they are. The most common example is that clinical low-carb versus low-fat studies, the low-carb side of the study is reduced only about 5 or 10% from the US data guidelines. But going by any low-carb advocate's suggestions, 5 to 10% just isn't enough. But even then, the low-carb diets typically fare better. However, it's this minimal decrease in parameters that leads to a small number of studies proving otherwise. Uh, Andrea Seinfeld on the Diet Doctor website points to at least 14 controlled clinical studies of the highest caliber that were actually done correctly, and you can guess what the results were. It would seem to many that so far Gary Tobbs has been quiet in regards to the accusations against his theories. Not even his theories, but against what people who haven't read his books believe his theories are. Uh, that's not entirely true. As I've said, these accusations have been going on for years now, but only recently have they come to light again. As I found out recently, Gary Tobbs responded to nearly all of the recent accusations about seven months ago, back in January. If you want to read it, just search for Fathead Gary Tobbs interview on Google. He's also going to appear on the podcast Latest in Paleo as soon as next week, which I highly recommend listening to anyway. I understand how easy it is to believe something just because it sounds smart. I mean, that's what's currently going on with the USDA guidelines, right? Uh, most people leave that stuff without question. We're not doing ourselves any favors by denying well-performed, well-researched, all-around good science, uh, simply because, for whatever reason, we just don't think it's true. At the first sign of an observational or a poorly performed clinical study uh, disproving the low-carb theories, uh, at the drop of a hat, people in the paleo community are signaling for the death of the low-carb science. I just don't get it. I understand, though. You're not fat, you've never been fat, and sugar didn't make you fat, but you eat sugar. So how is it possible that sugar makes people fat? Uh, not everything happens to everybody. If it did, everyone would get cancer, everyone would have heart attacks, and so on. You can't really believe that the people who come down with these problems did something spectacularly different uh, and unique from the rest of us, can you? Uh, never mind the dozens of controlled clinical studies and the countless people in the community who have been experimenting uh, on themselves for years, if not for decades, including myself.